Hi everyone! Today we will talk about the perfect roadmap of learning Python. So if you are new to Python and you want to study it on your own, where exactly do you begin? Now this tutorial was requested by Mike, so thank you so much for the lovely comment and for the incredible idea. Now let's do this. Now the first step in any programming language is to understand the types of data we can work with. So how do we represent data in Python? We use something called variables, which are basically placeholders to different kinds of data. So for example, we can store integers inside variables, which is another name for whole numbers. We can also store floating point numbers, which are fractions. We can also go for strings, which represent text. And we can also go for something called Boolean, which can either be true or false, zero or one, on or off. These four are the most basic data types that Python has to offer, but that's not all. What if we want to represent a pair of integers, or maybe a grocery list with multiple items? We will then learn the advanced data types, such as tuples and lists, which allow us to bundle a few values together. We can also learn about dictionaries, which unlike tuples and lists, also give special names to their items. Now, after we learn the data types, we also need to understand what exactly can we do with them. So for example, with strings, we can slice them in the middle, we can replace one word with another, and we can convert them to uppercase letters. These operations are called methods, and different types of data have different types of methods associated with them. And the reason is, no matter how hard we try, we can never find out the square root of banana. It just doesn't make any sense. So certain operations work for integers, certain operations work for strings, and it's perfectly normal. Next, we need to understand the control flow operations. Meaning, what if we do not want our program to run in a perfect sequence? What if we want to add a condition where if it's sunny, then I'll go camping in the forest. But if it is not sunny, then I'll sit at home, study Python. So basically, we need ways to control the execution of our code. Now in Python, we use conditional statements, we use for loops, and we use while loops for it. And if you guys want to find out more about it, you can check out my recent for loop video, which I will include in the description. Once we understand how to control our code, we will also need to learn how to organize it. And it is very common to separate between different tasks with something called functions. Now, functions are basically instructions to perform a specific action. And you guys can find out much more about it in a very recent video of mine, link in the description. Then we can move on with classes and objects. Now, classes are quite similar to functions, but instead of focusing on the task itself, we actually bundle the task along with the data required to perform the task. So let's say we have a motorcycle class. The data would probably be the speed, the fuel kind, maybe the engine capacity, and is there a helmet or not? But the task or the functionality would be drive safely and also stop once you reach your destination. So we have basically bundled the information about the class with the actions that the class can do. And if you guys want to find out more about it, I have a recent tutorial about classes as well. And once you finish this one, you can actually practice everything you have learned in this forest of objects code along. Now, once we understand the previous topics, we can then move on with some basic Python modules. We can learn about NumPy, which deals with mathematical operations. We can also learn about pandas, which helps us represent and manipulate all kinds of data. Now, these two are probably the most common Python libraries, and we often combine them with an additional library called Matplotlib to create scientific graphs and all kinds of fancy plots. Now, I'm sure you guys have seen me using it a lot in my tutorials. I'll include a bunch of examples here. And from this point, the rest of your journey is entirely up to you. If you're interested in machine learning, try PyTorch or TensorFlow, which are really powerful frameworks. Or alternatively, if you'd like to learn how to build bots, try Selenium or Beautiful Soup, which are perfect for process automation. If you'd like to develop mobile applications with Python, why don't you try Kiwi or KiwiMD? 
If you're more of a web development person, you can always try Django and Flask. Or if you're more of a desktop application person, you can always try Tkinter, PyQt5, um, Kiwi and KiwiMD will do the trick here as well. So I'm basically just scratching the surface of the things you can do with Python. And there are so many different paths that you can choose. Now, in my opinion, the best way to learn all these libraries is by practicing, not by reading from the documentation like a robot. I personally find that by doing something creative, like making your own projects, you will learn much faster and everything will be much more rewarding in the end especially since you can add these projects to your portfolio and share them with the world or with potential employers. And this is exactly how I learned. My Python skills, they were not that good before I started making my own bots, my own programs, and my own games. The more projects I built, the more experience I gained. And at this point, I feel very confident of my Python skills, but it wasn't always like that. I just practiced a lot and I still do. So just because you don't remember all the commands, it doesn't mean you don't understand Python. It just means that you need to keep practicing. And if at first building your own projects, it's a bit difficult, you can always follow my tutorials. You can see how I approach things and then you can apply the same principles on your own programs. And who knows, maybe one day you will come up with a really fancy startup. So I really hope that you found this tutorial helpful and best of luck on your Python journey. If you want to be extra awesome, please leave me a comment saying why you want to study Python and what you are planning to do with your skills. Now, thank you so much for watching and I will see you soon.